thing that differentiates cactus and succulents is that succulents don't have needles and thorns. These are little needles on this cactus. These are real fine needles in this cactus. All of these plants are not winter hardy. There are a few winter hardy cactus in Memphis. They're, you see them in people's front yards. They're called prickly pear. This is a, a prickly pear is a puncha, and this is actually in a punch. But uh, it is not the variety that is. Uh, winter hardy. So, what I want to do is tell y'all what it takes to have a dish garden. Um, I brought various examples of dishes. This is actually a little bonsai dish. This one is a dish that uh, I got some plants from Lowe's. In it. This is the one I'm going to use. This is just the terracotta dish. One thing that's important, all these have in common, are the drainage holes. You have to have a drainage hole. Here's another little dish card. This has got a little cactus and desert motif. This is terracotta. These are saucers. This one, I drilled some holes in a terracotta salsa, and I went to uh, uh, one of these um, uh, shops that you can glaze whiteware, and I glazed my salsa. And here's another one. I've had these planted in the past, and they're just uh, they're vacant now. But they're all the thing to recognize and what your needs are is a shallow, wide pot, not a deep pot. The faster the soil drains, the better it is for cactus. Enemy of cactus is being wet too long. This is a soil mix. The soil mix is well draining. It has to have sand and gravel and non-organic material in it. Uh, for the mm -hmm. cactus, well draining soil. You want to let your plants, your cactus and succulents, dry out totally in between waterings. Very important. Very important. In the smaller the container, faster they dry out. And of course, the soil they're in. Uh, when you go to select plants, there's no rules, but the guidance I will give you is make sure the plants are compatible. There are a few cactus, or rather succulent, that hardly ever need water. So you, you need to know your plants before you match them together. These that I'm going to use to plant a dish garden later in this presentation are not such that they're not compatible. When I select the plants, and again, this is just aesthetics. A, I always use odd numbers. B, I get different shapes. And I try to get not so much in the small dish, but in uh, bigger gardens, I get um, a variety of shapes and not tall. I have brought, well, let's see, six different dish gardens. If I can show y'all the ones I've done in the past. This one's a terracotta that's been glazed. And you see the different shapes and heights. You'll also notice that it's got some decoration in it. I use a, a top dressing that uh, is available in active. Uh, aquatics department of a, a pet store is the, uh, the gravel for an aquarium. And I just put in a few stones that I like. But you'll notice the variety in the textures, in the, in the shapes of the plants. Here's another small terracotta. Uh, 
Here's this one that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then some little dragon in there. The balloon from Mardi Gras. Little rock. I've got rocks in here. Just all sorts of things. And just, I'd suggest just personalize what you like. You don't have to have anything in there. Um, you don't have to even have to have a top dress. It's just aesthetics. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the, excuse me, about the care and the needs of your plants. All my plants go outside in the summertime. After the first frost, you, uh, before the first frost, you need to bring them in. But after the last frost, you can take them out. Now, not all cactus take direct sun. Some do better in morning, light, afternoon, indirect. Some do better in indirect all the way. But what you have to do is be familiar with your plants. Know your plants. Um, I brought a book. This is called The World Encyclopedia of Cactus and Succulent. Uh, the author is Miles Anderson. This is the book I always recommend and the book I use from time to time to find details, and names, and things of that nature. This is what I suggest if you need a book. There's books in the library, too. Um, here's one, Succulents by Robin Stockwell, that's available at the library. The conditions that you keep your plants in determines how well it's going to grow. We have ideal conditions, maybe three months out of the year, and which is in some ways is a good thing because I don't want to have to deal with real big plants. I've got to say, watch what you wish for because you might get it. I'm getting to the point in my life where I can't carry in big plants. I have big plants. And the point I'm trying to make is these plants and these dish gardens I have are in the right scale. But if you start letting them grow too big, you're going to have to uh, deal with those issues. Um, the water needs of cactus, um, ideally rainwater. In the wintertime, I age my water. In other words, I, I fill a pitcher and I let it sit for a few days, and that's what I water with. Sometimes I actually use a mist bottle and spray in the wintertime to water my plants. Just mist them every once in a while, and they'll absorb the water, and uh, it works fine. Fertilizing. Only fertilize your cactus when they're actively growing, which they're dormant now, so now is not the time. In the middle of the, uh, the summer, dilute your, your fertilizer to half strength. In other words, if it calls for an ounce of fertilizer to a gallon of water, use a half an ounce to a gallon of water. And only do it when it's actively growing, do not fertilize your cactus and succulents when you're going into dormancy, which is from September on, isn't a good time to fertilize. And I try to bring my plants in dry because you're taking them from a situation where they will utilize the water to a situation in the house where they're not going to get as much uh, light need water so you, you don't want them to have the water that they can't use that will be a problem the, the problem in the the enemy in the cold of cactus is being wet you don't want them wet 
when you bring them inside. I think I'm about ready to show y'all how I put a, a garden together. I'm gonna plant this particular dish here. And the first thing I do is I put this little piece of material, this is like uh, what might be used in uh, um, putting together a different knitting. Uh, I think it's Bargello, what it's from, where you knit this like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, needle point or something like that. And I use this in the hole. The next thing I do would be prepare my plants. So I was going to show y'all one of the little tools that I use. I just take this knife and run it along the side and break the surface tension so I can get the plant out of the little pot it's growing in. Get all three of them out. I like these little uh, starter pots that are made out of terracotta. These actually hadn't ruined yet, but I have put them together for this demonstration. Kind of put your plants in and see how much soil you're going to need and where you're going to place them. I don't need much soil in here to get it to the right height. Again, guys, this is a has a lot of gravel in it. You want to zero in on that. A lot of gravel and sand in it. I'm just going to pack it in. I brought a little uh, little plastic spoon to help me get into tight spots. You might find that helpful. I'm sure all y'all can figure out the tools that you need. This, that white powder is rooting hormone that I put on here. Now I'm ready to use one of the top dressings I brought. I've got it all in place. I might tidy up a little bit.
in case y'all are curious, this is some kind of a crush grab, uh, crush gram. Just to distribute it around and don't worry about getting it on the plants because you could take a little paintbrush or air or your tweezers, uh, just whatever it takes to get it off of the plants if you need to. I want to show you a little tool that I like using these little tongs. These other tools are just coming ice out a little knife and a little spoon. But the tongs are real good to get into different areas. I'm going to press it down a little bit. Now, when you plant cactus, it's best not to water it immediately because you have a tendency to damage the roots. And if you damage the roots and you water it, it might tend to uh, give it a little rot. So wait a couple of weeks before you water it and then water it thoroughly and it'll help settle everything. and. Uh, allow for better contact with the roots, with the soil. And uh, important thing to know when you're watering, water when the sun and the heat is available to the plant and water it thoroughly. The best way to water is to water from below. And that would entail just taking your plant and setting down in a saucer and uh, whatever water it can take up in an hour, is an adequate amount for this cactus. The other things I have brought are a few decorations to personalize with. I've got some rocks here. Different rocks. Champagne cork. Little wiring from a champagne. And this is some kind of a mat. A piece of glass. I think I might just put this glass on there. Other things you could do. These are a little, couple little flattened marbles. It, just whatever, whatever uh, suits you. Whatever it's your personality. I like rocks in the sea. That might be too big. That looks good. Just whatever you like. There's no right or wrong. And like I said, in uh, a couple of weeks, just give it a good watering on a sunny day and a good light. And just whatever it can take up in an hour and you'll be fine. And you never can tell when you're going to find a pot that you like. You can shop at the big box stores or um, thrift stores. You just got to have a hole in it. You've got to have a hole in it. Um, if you find a pot that you like, but um, doesn't have a hole, you can use a ceramic drill. And if you find a ceramic drill and you're going to use that, when you're doing your drilling, make sure that you're, uh, you keep your drill bit wet. And it shouldn't take long to, uh, to drill it out. Now, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. We have definitely got some questions coming in, so just a moment while we get Kathy for oh, our fine. questions.
That's good. Give them a shot of close up of the, the mixture of plants. It's back on the. Hey guys, let me tell y'all something. Both Home Depot and Lowe's are on live now. Let me make sure. I've got you set up, and we're going to. You're, you're good. You're on there, Tom. Oh, uh, guys, what I was going to tell you, um, both Lowe's and Home Depot have a wide variety of nice plants, um, succulents and cactus that are appropriate for dish gardens, small dish gardens, uh, you know, like a, a plant of this size. Um, they might not have them this time of year. But they they generally have them during the growing season. A lot of the plants that I grow, I grow from when I propagate the plants. And that was one of our questions. How do you propagate your plants? Well, I propagate them either from cuttings or from offsets. An offset is a small plant that when they become mature, they will put a plant off from the base. Some of them have it on the body of the plant, a little plant. And sometimes when they get um, they get root bound, they tend to offset the plants. And I'll take one of those plants when it's at the right size, or I'll take a cutting. Like here's a cutting. Well, this one actually grew off of a leaf that fell off. Sometimes with some succulents, you can just take a leaf and lay it on the surface of the of the uh, soil and a little baby will grow. Did he show them that? Baby, I'm sorry. This is actually a leaf. It has a little baby on it. Now, if you take a cutting off your plants, in other words, come in here with your scissors and cut that piece. You can take a cutting of this one. I'm probably not going to hit you in that one. This one here, or this one, they will take cuttings. Take a cutting off of this one, or this one. This is actually an aloe, guys. We're all familiar with the, or most people are familiar with aloe vera that you use for your skin or a burn. Well, this is a different variety of aloe. There's actually, actually uh, 300 different varieties of aloe. And one variety that's called aloe vera that's good for burns and skin. I use aloe vera after I shave every day. All right, we've got another question about someone who has a cactus in a terrarium that's grown too large. B, I can didn't they prune it? I didn't I didn't answer the other question. I'm sorry, let me let you finish. Uh, now after you make your cutting, you want it to callus over. In other words, where the cut is, you want it to dry up thoroughly. So if uh, before you put it into your soil, your soil should be the same well-draining soil that you use for your gardens and make it into a small container, the smallest container that you can. And just after a couple of weeks when it's dried up, put it in your container, put it in good light, Wait a couple of weeks and water it. And when it's when you start to see it growing, you'll know that it's well rooted. Uh, you can root anything any time of year, but the best time for best results is when it's actively growing. And you can you can succulents like this one, this one. This one, this one, this one, that one. You can use some cuttings or, or leaves, either one. The, the leaves are a lot slower than the cuttings because the leaves have to root themselves and then put off their bait. But that, that's, uh, they're very easy to, uh, to propagate. 
So if that covers that um, sufficiently, let's move to the next question, please. Okay. They did have a related question. Does the rooting hormone go on after it calls Alice is over or before? After. Yeah. The way you do it with the rooting compound, it's it's powdery, comes in a little jar. You take your cutting after it's calloused, like uh, we've established, dip it in water, shake off excess water, then dip it into the rooting compound, and then shake it off. Now, if you don't want to go the expense, you can also use cinnamon, just regular uh, human grade powdered cinnamon, and do the same thing. I use the rooting compound. And you can have success without it, but I think you go to the trouble to do it, it's worth using it. And just put it in your container and, and you're in business. Small container, the smaller the better. You see the size that I was using for these, it could be even smaller than those. I hope that answers your question sufficiently. All right. Now, the other question we had was about a cactus in a terrarium that's grown too large. It's a straight single trunk cactus. Can you prune it? And if so, how do you do it? And can you prune the part? Can you root the pruned part? Yes, you can. You can definitely root the, the pruning part, the pruned part. And I would use sharp scissors or a, a single edge razor blade and uh, get in there and carefully cut it. Uh, it, will, it will put off new growth now. Uh, you can either take that part that you prune off and let it callus over and put it in the terrarium. Uh, you can put it however you want to, either close to the base of the one that it came off of or on a different side of the terrarium. Um, a word of caution with terrariums is um, I have plenty of gravel uh, down at the bottom of the terrarium, so any excess moisture has a place to go or ideally have a drainage hole in the terrarium. Another question. Guys, hang on. We're... What causes a cactus to die and how often do you need to water? Well, uh, there's a lot of things that could cause it to die, but most commonly it's it's overwatering. But you can't underwater a cactus. And I always get a charge out of people that were saying they water their plants once a week. Well, I don't understand the rationale other than that, other than you have to have some kind of discipline. Uh, what I do for my cactus, and I don't water them in the wintertime like we've established, I just water by feel. You know your plant, how heavy it is when it's wet versus dry. And in the summertime, it's more pronounced because they do dry out much faster. But remember this. There's, there's three things that you can give the plants. That's heat, light, and water. Well, in addition, fertilizer. But heat, light, and water. Having extra water doesn't make up for not enough heat and light. Another, if you have heat and light, you're going to need water. If you don't have heat and light, like some people put their plants, not necessarily cactus, but plants in general, in the garage, and they go dormant. They don't need water if they're dormant. So the same thing's true with cactus, and they're dormant now and have very little water needs. If this, these dish gardens were outside, it had been 90 degrees, um, and it hadn't rained, 
for a day, two days, three days. They need water. They need water and they need thoroughly water. But know your plants. And I use that. You can always stick your finger. They sell meters that you could use that have probes that you can stick down in the soil. They'll tell you whether they're dry or not. But the main thing I do is I can tell by um, picking them up. The other thing you can tell, and this goes more for typical house plants, foliage plants, when a leaf is erect like this, it doesn't need water. When it droops, the water's been reduced, the moisture in the cells has been reduced, and the cells don't have the rigidity to stand up. So if they're drooping, they need water. And sometimes with succulents, you can tell because the uh, the leaf might be a little concave that uh, that uh, it's not filled out. This plant right here, these ribs allow for this plant to expand and contract based on its water need. If it dries up, it it can uh, contracts. So uh, that's a guide too. But the best thing to do in my mind, and I'm sure this is a starting point for you guys, is the weight of the plant. And the, the best way for me to water is with uh, um, aged water. I hope that answers your question. Do we have any more, Vivi? Uh, he has a question about trying to propagate aloe vera. It rots when he does it. Are there any suggestions? Well, my suggestion for aloe vera to rot to root it is you have to have an offset. You have to have roots on it. You have to have roots. So um, wait until the offset. And again, what an offset is, it's a small plant that comes off the root. But the longer you keep that offset on the plant, on the mother plant, the bigger and the faster it will grow. But when you're ready to do it, just when you have secured your offset, make sure none of the roots are uh, damaged and bruised. And then you can actually... If, if you got long roots and you want to put it to a small container, you can cut the roots to make them shorter and just put it into the appropriate size container, smaller the better, and uh, put in your soil. Um, and there again, after you put it in, don't water it for a couple of weeks. Now, aloe vera, it's one of those succulents, just like a jade plant, that is very popular uh, and very common. It's been around for years. Those two plants are plants that fall into the category of not liking direct light. Aloe vera does better in indirect light, morning light, afternoon shade, and so does jade. Um, Actually, aloe vera will grow well in the ground. It just needs to be transplanted before the last frost. It grows very well in the ground. And it's a great plant to grow because you can use it on burns or it's good for your skin uh, in general. Good moisturizer. Your body is able, to, it has the right properties, including pH, that the body can absorb it readily. Great plant. In case those that are uh, listening not familiar with aloe, the way you use it is you take the oldest leaf, which will be on the bottom of the, uh, the lowest uh, part of the stem, and you either cut it open or tear it open. And um, before you do that, you want to soften it up some by just rubbing the uh the, the uh, leaf and uh just put it on the area that you cut or burned and uh it's a great way to lessen the pain from a burn 
if you use some, you want to use it the next day, all you have to do is wrap it up in some ceram wrap or plastic or whatever and uh, put it in the refrigerator and use it the next day until, until you no longer need it. Great plant for your, uh, if you have a window in your kitchen to be prepared for uh, those burns that we get when we're preparing our uh, meals. Any other questions, guys?